Well, I hope you're doing well. Uh, we're talking about uh, various topics that we'll be talking about in the next, actually, few months because these two series are going to go for quite a while. On Sundays, we'll be talking about the finished work, the particular sound of the finished work, what it produces in our life, how it affects us, uh, how it relates to our faith and our attitude, our actions, so on and so forth. <clears throat> That'll be on Sundays. I'm not quite sure how long that will go, but it'll be probably at least a month or more. But then on Wednesday nights, and this is going to take quite a while, we're going to be speaking on a topic that I think is a little more relevant and practical to some of the folks that are in the church, whether you're uh, in this, whether you have, are in the experience of this or not. It's what you should know about marriage or why you'll marry the wrong person. Now, the second aspect of that title comes from a little book that I've read that was quite intriguing to me. Uh, it's a secular book. There's many things in there that aren't necessarily proper in terms of their what they allow in relationships, but there are some very specific truths there. And remember that God is the one that creates truth. Uh, we only come to know or learn to prove what he's already established. So, for example, God created marriage, and marriage was to be this sharing of an experience of not only life-giving through childbirth, but also the sharing of a goal in life together, a purpose. Uh, Sue and I have had the privilege, and not that it's always been the most fun privilege, but it's been a privilege for us to serve the body of Christ for the number of years that God's provided for us. It's been a privilege. Uh, uh, we've, as you well know, we've at times had challenges with our children, and certainly there will be with our grandchildren. But would I, in any way, uh, I was telling Sue the other day, I, would I not want to have had because of the problems? No way. In all of this, I've learned so much about myself, my faith in Christ, my love for my children, what it should and shouldn't be, and how I should express that. God's been teaching through all of it, and I, I hope that we all see that. But what is it we should know about marriage? We're going to begin tonight with an introduction that talks about the very stages of marriage in the Bible, <coughs> which, by the way, have such a correlation to what God is at this time doing with his church. And we'll be showing you that tonight. So listen in. But there's other topics that will be a part of this that I think are, are really quite compelling and have much to say to us. That, uh, we could actually speak to and, and uh, share. Let me go through that. This is some of the things that are brought out. Really, honestly speak, to each one of us is uh, we don't understand ourselves is one of the reasons they say you'll marry the wrong person. Another one is we don't understand other people. Think about this. How do I come to know who I am apart from Christ? If I'm just totally self-conscious, do I really know myself? I mean, this is just something we can explore. Jeremiah 17, 9 says you don't. Do we really understand other people? Or do we just understand what they present to us? We need to understand and get to know people. Why is there such a thing as, you know, a courting phase or what in the Bible called a betrothal where people are taking time to prepare to get to know each other? Why is that important? Uh, some people will marry the wrong person, they say, because you aren't used to being happy, meaning that you've, you are the result of those things that have been vested into your life, the relationships that you've seen around you. Think of how many broken homes and how many single-parent homes that were... <coughs> Thank God for all the amazing ones and the godly ones, but think of all the many that are just how much stress and turmoil there is and oftentimes uh, 
people raised in these environments really struggle with relationships. We'll, we'll talk about some of these things. This is just a few. Some people marry just simply because they're just, they don't want to be single. I get it. But that's not the reason to marry. And we'll talk about what, how God motivates us in marriage and how does he view these things and how does he view the right person for your life. Um, well, uh, there's so many others. We, we, we want happiness, but we think of happiness in a very distinct way. It has to do with the other person and not the one who truly provides happiness and how we gain happiness. Think about a relationship where everyone has to serve you in order for you to be happy. That's the complete opposite of what Christ says happiness is to mean to us. There's just so many of these, and we'll be going through this for many, many, uh, probably a couple of months. I hope you'll be listening in on Wednesday nights. Come on out. I'd be uh, interested in the discussion, the feedback, and how we can talk through these things, and how the Word of God relates to all this. So my prayer is that the next couple of series will be a, a tremendous benefit and a blessing not only to you, but to the church in general. Till next time, friends, God bless you. Three, two, one.